Hi everyone. Our previous topic was heat, and now this topic we are starting with the temperature. As I told you, even in the previous lecture, I have told you that you sh there is a specific difference between heat insulation, that is heat and insulation, we, which we studied in last lecture, that is insulation and then the heat balance of the earth, and then temperature. What is the basic difference between heat and the temperature? Insulation is the amount of sun's energy which we receive. Then insulation heats up the surface of the earth. After heating up, the surface of the earth transfers the heat to the atmosphere by the process of conduction that is transferred through the molecules, transfer by touching of the body, one hot body and cold body if they touch, then the heat gets transferred or by the process of convection or by the process of radiation. These are the three different processes through which the heat is transferred from ground to the upper atmosphere and the upper atmosphere gets heated up due to the radiation, due to convection, due to convection from the ground, which through which waves, long waves from the ground, they heat up the lower atmosphere, they heat up the atmosphere and this heated at atmosphere, the degree or the intensity of hotness or coldness, what we feel, we call it as a temperature. So, our next topic is about the temperature and not just the insulation, not just heat balance but about temperature. So what is this temperature? This temperature is the denotes the intensity or degree of hotness or coldness. It is intensity of hotness or coldness. It is the intensity of the hotness or the coldness. So, heating and cooling of the atmosphere, it's it, heating and cooling of the atmosphere or we can say the high temperature in the atmosphere, the degree of hotness or coldness in the atmosphere depends on two factors. One is the insulation which we get, but if the question comes in the examination tomorrow that what is the major source of heating up of the atmosphere, if the one option is insulation or solar radiation, the second option is ground or terrestrial radiation, what should be your answer? Is the terrestrial radiation necessary or is it the solar radiation which is the one of the major source of heating? No doubt, as I said you in, even in the previous lecture that the parent source or the main source of heating the earth is the insulation or solar radiation. But after the earth gets heated, it transfers the heat through the form of long wave terrestrial radiation and this long wave terrestrial radiation is not allowed to escape the earth by water vapor, by carbon dioxide, these are the chief constituents and some of the other greenhouse gases such as methane, such as carbon monoxide. So these gases do not allow the heat to leave the earth or the amount of heat is trapped inside the earth, it is reflected back to earth, again reflected, again reflected back and thus the heat gets trapped inside the earth resulting into increase in the temperature of an atmosphere. In the previous lecture we did the heat balance of the earth. Heat balance of the earth, here we have done the, in the heat balance that whatever the energy, whatever the amount of solar radiation which the earth gets, earth radiates its back, it's fine. Yes, it is radiating back. The solar radiation is being radiated back, but the terrestrial radiation in the form of long wave, it is also radiated back, but it is trapped and that is the, what why we are feeling the temperature. So, the heating of the earth surface or we can say now heating and cooling of the atmosphere because we are doing the climatology part, so heating of the atmosphere. the heating of the atmosphere, the process of heating of the atmosphere done by ground radiation or terrestrial radiation.
in the form of of long waves these are in the form of a long waves the ground or terrestrial radiation is in the form of long waves so though indirectly sun is the major factor major factor in heating the atmosphere but most important factor is the most important factor is the ground radiation or we can say terrestrial radiation so you now know the answer if it comes in the question uh, examination what you say the what is the most important factor in heating the in heating of the atmosphere it is the ground or the terrestrial radiation and not the sun sun is a major factor but not the most important factor so how this process how this how is this process initiated as we have already done heating of the atmosphere atmosphere is the gaseous envelope or a gaseous covering on the surface of the earth so the if this is the ground surface and this is the atmosphere it is consisting of the numerous gases it is an envelope on the surface of the earth the radiated heat the heat which is radiated from the ground goes back to the atmosphere and it is not allowed to escape but it is radiated back to the atmosphere atmosphere it is it comes back to the atmosphere again reflected again radiated back again reflected again radiated back so this is how the atmosphere will get heated up so heat is trapped and and temperature increases what is this you know this phenomena is known as green house effect or it is also known as in glass effect as i have already given you example in previous lectures hot or if a car parked in an open area not in the shade if a car is parked in an open area it becomes very hot so what is the next thing a person does is generally open the window so that the heat which is trapped inside escapes the heat similarly in the atmosphere the heat the ground radiation is trapped and why ground radiation is trapped because the atmosphere many of the constituents of the atmosphere not exactly the atmosphere many of the constituents of the atmosphere they are transparent to incoming short wave solar radiations while they are opaque or they trap the outgoing long wave terrestrial radiations such an effect is known as greenhouse effect the gases which do such an greenhouse that is which do not allow the long wave terrestrial radiations to escape these are known as greenhouse gases as well as water vapor also acts see listen to my words water vapor also acts like a greenhouse gas and also it is also known as an glass effect because even in the glass same thing you can absorb so the radiations enter the car through the glass but it cannot escape the glass again so the long wave versus the short wave radiation so this is how the heating of the atmosphere takes place so what is the major source for the heating of the atmosphere no doubt the major source take it in your mind the major source for the heating of the atmosphere is ground radiation in the form of long wave terrestrial radiations so terrestrial radiation ground radiation is the major source the most important source for heating of the atmosphere direct source indirect is sun sun does not directly heat up the atmosphere sun heats up the ground and then the ground heats up the atmosphere so obviously the major source is 
atmosphere. If someone burns the hand by touching a hot vessel, the answer when if the doctor asks, so what, how did you cause a burn? They, if they won't say that by putting the hand on the gas or in the flame. The answer will be the hot vessel. So because the direct contact is with the hot vessel. Obviously the vessel initially was not hot. It must have been put on uh, under the stove or a burner and then it got hot. But we never go to doctor and say that it is because indirectly through the burner we got uh, uh, her vessel got hot and then I burnt my hand or one burnt the hand. It is never. It is the hot vessel which causes the burning. Silencer of a motorcycle which causes the burning. Fuel is not a cause. Because obviously the motor was running, the gas burner was running, so the burn happened. Same thing, same logic you apply. Whatever may be the explanations one may give you, the, you should remember the source of heating of the atmosphere is the ground radiation not the solar radiation solar radiation as i say burner i why i give you an example of a burner is because to say at least tell you burner got hot this vessel got hot because it was placed on a gas but the burnt occurred due to the hot vessel similarly obviously the solar radiation heat up the atmosphere but the atmosphere, uh, solar radiation heats up the earth, earth in the turn then heats up the atmosphere, but what directly heats up the atmosphere is the ground or terrestrial radiation. So this is the, this is the major source. Now what is the process of heating of the atmosphere? The process of mechanism of heating by this processes, the heating of the atmosphere occurs due to conduction, convection or we can say radiation, I will take first and then convection. then convection. Now, considering that these all are basics, very basics, I won't go too much deep into it because this is not just related to geography, it is also related to general science or 6, 7, 8 standard science level. Any of the science books, you can know the phenomena of conduction, convection and radiation. Still, what is the process of a conduction? Conduction is the transfer of the heat through the molecules. is transfer of heat by molecules in any body. This is the process of con conduction. So if the heat has to be transferred through a molecule, if this is one hot surface and if this is the cold surface, if I want to transfer the heat through molecules. It is not that heat can be transferred if I keep it at a distance. For transferring the heat through molecules, I need to bring it together and touch it. There is no Bluetooth connectivity. It, there is no near field technology here. I, I have to bring it in the contact. So, the contact is necessary in the process of conduction. So, the process of conduction and obviously the process of conduction both if this one body is hot, this body is cold, then only if I touch the body, there will be transfer of heat. If these bodies are of same temperature, then there won't be any use by touching. So the conduction, you have to remember, conduction is effective. By touching the bodies of different temperature by touching the bodies often different temperature now the third is Conduction, which are good conductors of heat? Metal is a good conductor of heat.
But why? Why? Because we are doing the climatology part. We are not concerned with metal, but we are concerned with air. But air is poor or bad of heat. And because the air is poor or bad of heat, air is not an effective medium to transfer the heat. Therefore, the heat transfer by conduction will not occur. Where is air? Will not occur vertically where the air moves up and down or, or through the touching of the molecules in the air. Though air is there surrounding us, but the air is, the process of conduction is not effective in an air. The process of conduction is effective only if the molecules touch each other of different that is hot stone, cold stone and if they are metals then only conduction will be possible. But air is a bad conductor of heat and therefore you remember therefore heat transfer through conduction. through conduction is is effective only up to few meters is effective only up to few meters in lower atmosphere in lower atmosphere. Heat transfer through conduction will be effective only in the lower atmosphere. Now I know you must know why we are why we are doing this because this is simple physics not required in geography but I am doing this process though it is bit slow and bit may you must be thinking if this entire process conduction is the transfer by molecules of different temperature this is all physics but this is where the U any UPSC or any examination taking in the future the preliminary examination obviously in this the statement can come directly that heat transfer due through conduction is effective in the entire atmosphere or effective only up to few meters. So what you have to remember from the geography point of view that is heat transfer to conduction is effective only for few meters. In which atmosphere? That is in the lower atmosphere. This is why I took this that is heat transfer through the process of conduction is effective only up to few meters in the lower atmosphere because air is a bad or poor conductor of heat. Now the process of, now the second process is of radiation. The second process is of radiation. What is the process of an radiation? Now radiation is the transfer of heat heat from one body to another to another without any medium. without any medium. So, it does not require the help of a medium. That is, it does not require the help of a medium, solid medium, stones or metals. It does not require liquid medium, that is water. Neither, neither does it require the help of a gaseous medium. The sort of transfer of heat from one body to other body without the help of any medium is known as, is called as an radiation. So, therefore, the sun's energy which can, so if the question comes tomorrow, can the sun's energy travel in a vacuum or can the sun radiation, sun's radiation reach the earth through 
through the vacuum or is there atmosphere in the galaxy no radiation does not require the help of a medium that is why the sun's radiation sun's heat or sun's energy reaches us even when there is no atmosphere sun is billions of kilometer millions of kilometer away and still the sun's solar radiation comes that is why we say solar radiation we do not say solar conduction solar convection it is the radiation which is bringing the energy and because it can travel also so through the vacuum it does not require any medium so there are two kinds of radiations one is the solar radiation which heats up the ground. so solar radiation which heats up the ground and the terrestrial radiation and the terrestrial radiation which heats up the atmosphere which heats up the atmosphere so solar radiation heats up the ground surface and terrestrial radiation heats up the atmosphere now why does the terrestrial radiation heats up the atmosphere the terrestrial radiation is trapped and radiated back to the atmosphere it is trapped and radiated back to the earth's surface so this is how the it it is radiated back to the earth surface therefore the lower atmosphere therefore lower atmosphere is relatively warm therefore the lower atmosphere is relatively so the terrestrial radiation is trapped and radiated back to the earth keeping the lower atmosphere warm okay now this this you remember this again we are not doing direct geography here we are doing the applications here so if the tomorrow you already know one concept of geography in the troposphere that as you are going up the temperature decreases at the rate of 6.5 degrees celsius per kilometer it is known as normal lapse rate or you also know that the hill stations are cooler or you also know the higher the mountains there is a chance of a snowfall you also know most of the mountain peaks in the world or even in india in himalayan regions they are snow covered mountains you also know that one of the highest peak of africa mount kilimanjaro though it is located on the equator it is it is covered by the snow now you if i ask you why as i told you you know the normal lapse rate occurs you now the one of the application this that is the lower atmosphere is relatively warm and as you are going away from the lower atmosphere you are going away from the source of the heat because it is the terrestrial radiation which is heating up the most of the atmosphere through the or it is the earth which is heating up most of the atmosphere through the three process of conduction convection and and radiation so the terrestrial radiation is the one of the major source for heating up the atmosphere because it is trapped by the greenhouse gases and it is radiated back to the earth and the process keeps on repeating in the vicious cycle or we not vicious cycle actually the cycle goes on and thus the radiation occurs and therefore we can say the lower atmosphere is relatively warmer okay so this is one of the application keep in in mind we will 
come to that question in the factors affecting the distribution of temperature that is why hill stations are cold or why there is a presence of normal lapse rate okay so this is one of the factors which is there so this is there and the third process of heating of the atmosphere is convection through the process of convection now the process of convection is effective what is the process of a convection it is the transfer of heat by the movement of a substance or mass of a substance it is a transfer of heat heat through the movement of of mass of a substance that is when the this is the definition but when the entire substance or the substance moves from one part or a mass of a substance or a body of a substance when it moves from one part to another the heat is transferred and that is what we call as a convection now looking at here if i ask you with which medium will the convection and impact process in solid liquid gaseous can the solid medium move you see convection requires transfer through or movement of a mass obviously you do not see rock coming up climbing and moving and touching the other body and then settling or hot rock walking away and going in another region and i am not talking of human beings or i am not talking of animals i am talking of rocks i am talking of metals you do not see them walking and transferring the heat no the so therefore the convection is an effective medium of transfer of heat i am saying effective medium of the transfer of heat in in sorry in the gases that is air and in the liquids water so the convection is effective in therefore effective in fluids therefore it is effective in the fluids and gases that is water and gases so if you remember geography convectional current rotates the plates why because the inside the earth the rock is in the molten state and therefore the convectional current rise and they move the plates even if you remember the geography lecture if you pre previous geomorphology lecture if you keep on boiling the water heating the water the plates will move and as a result of this if there is too much vapor coming it has the power to displace the vessel which is covered by the lid it has power to displace the lid also and thus the process of convection now coming to that in the geography so in geography we can say in geography you will come to numerous as i am telling you application part in geography you will come to numerous examples convectional rainfall equatorial type of a forest equatorial type of a rainfall or convectional rainfall or thunderstorms or cyclones etc now what is this in this is in which the in air the convectional currents are set in that is the you know, on the hot ground surface the mass of an air rises upwards once the mass of an air rises upwards why it rises because the ground becomes extremely hot and because when the ground becomes extremely hot the air expands uska density decreases and therefore it rises upwards as the air is rising upwards it is also cooling because of cooling it cannot hold the moisture so it results into first formation of a clouds again the air will rise upwards and again amount of moisture first smaller clouds will be formed 
and then the larger clouds will be formed in the air which is rising upwards so the hot air rises upwards and as a result of this further rising up of the air further cooling up of the cloud i uh, will take this in topic again in the again in pressure again in winds again in humidity but you remember that humidity holding capacity that is how much capacity an air can hold humid air can hold is directly related to temperature so the you remember can hold high humidity cold air humidity holding capacity decreases humidity holding capacity decreases so if the hot air is rising up what are this this are the convectional currents which are set up in these are the convectional currents which are set up in therefore warm air becomes lighter the warm air becomes lighter rises upwards rises upwards because of rising upwards cools and gives rainfall because of cooling there is precipitation and rainfall there is precipitation and rainfall now look here this air hot air hai it is rising upwards because it is rising upwards it is cooling at a rate which is known as an normal lapse rate jo aapko pata hai that is 6.5 degree celsius per kilometer ke hisab se the air is cooling upwards therefore cold air has a low humidity holding capacity and then it gives rainfall so such kind of a rainfall which is this is just one part of a rainfall the such kind of a rainfall which is which occurs due to the convection due to the convectional region is known as an convectional rainfall so transfer of heat is also due, due to convection when the rainfall occurs latent heat of condensation and then is released in the atmosphere so such kind of a rainfall when there is an hot ground surface is one kind of a rainfall it is an convectional rainfall now if you as a person are standing here what is the where is the air going is it going away from you or it is coming on and settling on you obviously see the low, low way of an arrow this it is going away from you on other hand as if you are you as a person are standing in this region and if the air is coming downwards see the direction of arrow it is coming downwards so this is just the conceptual part of i am taking it is well, here it is going upwards here it is coming and settling downwards now in this because the air is moving upwards it is as if you are standing up in the on the back side of an exhaust fan so you will be pulled in because so you you are standing on the opposite side of an exhaust fan not facing the fan you are standing on the opposite side of an exhaust fan or the back side of an exhaust fan you won't feel any pressure of an air such an area is known as an low pressure zone i'll rub this so that you won't won't get more confused such an area is known as an low pressure or cyclonic conditions
it is not cyclone you remember it is known as an cyclonic conditions now you can see here the low pressure zone is always associated with rainfall i have shown shown rainfall so for the rainfall to occur the air has to rise up air can rise up due to convection or there are some other mechanisms which i will do while doing the rainfall chapter or the precipitation chapter but why the air rainfall is associated with air rising upwards because the rising air cools at the rate of 6.5 degree celsius per kilometer the rising air cools at the rate of 6.5 degree celsius per kilometer which is normal lapse rate why it is cooling at this rate because you are going away from the source of the heat can can you use this as an evidence that the heating up of the atmosphere is not by the solar radiation because as you are going away from the ground then you are going there and temperature decreases that means you are that means you you are go as you are going away from the ground the temperature is decreasing at this rate that means it is an evident enough it is a proof enough that is a ground is the major source or solar ground radiation is the major source of heating of the atmosphere not the solar radiation now coming to back to this as you are going up the temperature is decreasing at the at this rate the air is getting cooled up the cold air humidity holding capacity is decreasing and therefore it gives away extra rainfall now this is the bottle here it has this much humidity holding capacity if i cool this bottle this bottle will contract or if there is a decrease in the size or size of the bottle the extra air water will rise up and over some part of the time if the, if the bottle cannot hold this water the water will spill down the same thing the air when it is rising upwards it cannot hold the water because the temperature decreases as the moisture holding capacity is directly proportional to the rainfall so extra water from the air first there is a formation of clouds and then the extra water is given in the form of a rainfall so low pressure is always associated with rainfall low pressure or cyclonic conditions are always associated with the rainfall on other hand if the air is coming downwards if the air is coming downwards it is getting heated at this rate normal lapse rate agar aap upar ja rahe ho to you will get cooled at this rate but agar aap niche aa rahe ho to obviously the if cooling is occurring on one direction heating should occur in the opposite direction the air is getting heated at this rate at the 6.5 degree celsius so when the air is getting heated its temperature is increasing temperature is increasing its humidity holding capacity moisture holding capacity is increasing and therefore it is holding much more and more moisture and therefore when the air is coming downwards there is no rainfall now if you are standing below the fan below the fast fan or on the front side of an exhaust fan you will all obviously feel more pressure on yourself so when this air is coming down such an region is known as an high pressure zone so and this high pressure zone is always associated with dry conditions high pressure or anti cyclonic conditions and these are always associated with dryness in the atmosphere so the leeward side of andes because we have already done south america there is a patagonia desert because the air is coming downwards and there is a dryness or why there or there is a dryness in vidarbha region or marathwada region of maharashtra or north karnataka region or any region in which which is on the other side of a mountain on the leeward side of a mountain so why because of this region why there is very heavy rainfall on the windward side of a mountain jo coastal regions hai and there is a mountain here example mumbai why there is so heavy rainfall in the mumbai region why because mountain se takra ke air is rising upwards creating a low pressure and resulting into 
very heavy rainfall but as soon as it crosses the western ghat region or the shayadri mountain region the air is coming downwards it is getting heated and suddenly the rainfall decreases so though mumbai and pune mangalore or bangalore they are located only some 200 kilometers apart but there is so much vast difference in the amount of annual rainfall because of the effect of the western ghat region this is the condition now this is what is the heating of the atmosphere now our next topic which is again very important this was the basic part now you remember one before we start with the climatic regions before we start with the cyclonic regions before we go deep into climatology i want you to remember one thing in your mind fix it in your mind low pressure zone air rises upwards cyclonic conditions i am not saying cyclone again cyclonic conditions gives rainfall high pressure promotes dryness in the atmosphere this is again known as an anti cyclonic conditions so with this we are going to a next topic that is the factors affecting distribution of temperature